This is a new series called Beijing Observations. We are right on Yonghe Gong Avenue. This is the old town area of Beijing. Lama Temple is right ahead, about 460 meters away. Almost all the shops have shut down. There aren't many people on the streets, but you can see a few policemen. This is an ordinary street in Beijing, but it is far from ordinary. Because it's close to Lama Temple, Beijing Confucius Temple, and the Imperial College, you can reach them with just a short walk. This ray is lined with many hutongs, and exploring them will give you another glimpse of old Beijing.
Today is the first day of the Lunar New Year, and at this time, many people are still sleeping at home, but there are some who aren't. The people walking towards us are heading to join the queue, with some even jogging to avoid potentially long waiting times. Among them are Beijing natives, as well as others who have traveled from different provinces and cities just for this occasion. And their ages range widely, from young to old. Among the attendees, some have invited their family and friends, believing it would bring them good fortune. While others came along, feeling it would make their hearts more devout. Due to the large crowd and for the purpose of maintaining order, here are many police officers and soldiers present on the scene. As they bid farewell to the old and welcome the new, they eagerly anticipate the arrival of this moment. The Lama Temple is the largest Tibetan Buddhist temple in Beijing. In 1744, the Lama Temple was officially converted into a Tibetan Buddhist temple. Burning incense is common folk custom in China, particularly during the Spring Festival.
On the first day of the Lunar New Year, many people rushed to temples to burn incense, hoping to be the first to light the first incense of the year, believing it will bring them good luck. Why do people choose to burn incense on the first day of the New Year? Is it restricted to just that day? The Spring Festival lasts for 15 days, with the first and 15th days marking the peak of incense burning at temples. In Chinese folklore, the first and fifteenth days of each lunar month are deemed particularly auspicious. During this time, the moon waxes from new to full and then waxes back to new. We each phase believed to hold considerable significance. Consequently, individuals frequently up to visit temples during these intervals. To burn incense and offer prayers. Another reason is that the first and fifteenth days are considered ten precept days. On these two days, going to the temple to burn incense and worship Buddha is believed to increase the merit. Burning incense is a form of worshiping and showing respect to deities. However, in the Buddhist and Taoist communities, there is no doctrine stipulating the burning of a first incense, known as the head incense. After consulting various Buddhist and Taoist classics and historical records, there is no mention of the head incense. Let's take a look at the wishes people make when burning incense and worshiping Buddha. Some people burn incense and pray to the Buddha in the hope that the gods will bless themselves and their families, praying for peace and health. I think this is acceptable. However, there are also some people who burn incense and pray to the Buddha in a very utilitarian way. They burn incense and pray to the Buddha in order to pass exams, to get promoted, and become wealthy, and to make their business more successful. I spend money to burn incense for you, and in return, you help me fulfill my wishes. Some people come to burn incense with their own purpose or hopes in mind, rather than reverence for the gods. Lama Temple is Beijing's largest Tibetan Buddhist monastery. Now let's go see what interesting things are happening at the largest Taoist temple in Beijing.
How did Dongyue Temple get its name? And what does Dongyue Temple have to do with the burning of incense we are talking about? Please continue watch the video. Let me first introduce you to the five great mountains of China. The five great mountains collectively known as the five sacred mountains of China consist of Mount Tai in Shandong province known as the Eastern Peak, Mount Hua in Shanxi province known as the Western Peak, Mount Song in Henan province known as the Central Peak, Mount Heng in Shanxi province known as the Northern Peak, Mount Heng in Hunan province known as the Southern Peak. Emperor Dongyue is the Taoist deity of the sacred mountain Mount Tai, the head of the Taoist five great mountain gods and also the ruler god of the underworld. As you pass through the first gate, you see many little houses on both sides of the temple, with each house next to another. What are these little houses for, and what's inside? Let's take a closer look. Firstly, under the jurisdiction of the Dongyue Great Emperor, there are many administrative offices in the underworld. You can think of these little houses as offices. Each office has many statues. The statue sitting in the center is an official of the underworld, commonly known as a judge. The Dongyue Great Emperor is their boss. They all have different expressions and are about the same size as real people. They each have their own duties overseeing the Department of the Underworld. These judges are in charge of all aspects of life, such as longevity, wealth, good or bad karma, health, thoughts, morals, and so on. Let's take a closer look. Department of Accumulating Justifiable Wealth Making provision against a rainy day is a traditional way of accumulating wealth in China. Taoism holds that wealth and money is not an inseparable part of one's life, and money is not an inseparable part of one's life, and one shouldn't take illegal bribes in order to get rich. The correct way is to make generous contributions for any righteous cause of relief and in so doing, one is accumulating fortune and happiness for his own offsprings. Longevity Department Longevity is a universal desire. Taoist belief holds that people should refrain from slaughtering domestic animals and should live frugally and control their sensual desires. Death and Life Department <coughs> This department is in charge of determining death or life longevity of living subjects in the mortal world according to their meritorious deeds.
Department of Controlling Bullying and Treating. Bullying means overpowering the feeble. Treating means playing tricks against others. This department has the responsibility to advise that anyone involved in bullying, cheating, and fooling will be duly punished for their wrongdoings. The above is the official explanation of these underworld departments, their educational significance for people, and the enlightenment they provide. There are a total of 76 judges like this. Among these people who come to burn incense, there are some you can tell their purpose by which judge they offer incense to. You can also say that the purpose of people coming here to burn incense is more evident than those at the Lama Temple. What they care about is whether burning incense can bring them something rather than the culture of Buddhism or Taoism and their true belief. More wealth and a promotion in position rather than the culture of Buddhism or Taoism and their true belief. Contemporary renowned sociologist and anthropologist Mr. Fei Xiaotong has a very insightful description. We are very practical about ghosts and gods. We worship them for good weather. To eliminate disasters, our sacrifices are like entertaining guests, smoothing over, bribing. Our prayers are for wishes, supplications. To us, ghosts and gods represent power, not ideas. They are a source of wealth, not justice. This passage sharply pierces the deep-seated psychology of Chinese people who worship gods and Buddhists in their hearts. The utilitarian nature of burning incense and praying to the Buddha should not be overemphasized. Burning incense and praying to the Buddha is an important religious activity in Chinese traditional culture. It is not only a belief but also a cultural tradition. <coughs> However, in some places, the utilitarian nature of burning incense and praying to the Buddha is often too strong and even extreme. Firstly, burning incense and praying to the Buddha should be a belief, a respect, and all for the gods. However, some people regard burning incense and praying to the Buddha as a means to seek wealth and profit. They hope to obtain wealth and benefits through burning incense and praying to the Buddha. This utilitarian behavior not only violates the original intention of belief, but also contradicts morality and ethics. Secondly, burning incense and praying to the Buddha is a cultural tradition, a spiritual pursuit of the Chinese people. However, in some places, burning incense and praying to the Buddha has become a commercial activity. They use burning incense and praying to the Buddha to make huge profits and even turn burning incense and praying to the Buddha into a tourist attraction. This not only seriously damages the original intention of burning incense and praying to the Buddha but also contradicts the pretension and the inheritance of cultural traditions. Therefore, we should be vigilant about the utilitarian nature of burning incense and praying to the Buddha, not to let it be too strong and not to let it go to extremes. 
We should regard burning incense and praying to the Buddha as a belief and cultural tradition rather than a utilitarian behavior. At the same time, we should strengthen the supervision of burning incense and praying to the Buddha to prevent it from being commercialized and utilized. Only in this way can we truly protect and inherit the traditional culture and burning incense and praying to the Buddha. All right, that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. If you notice any mistakes, please drop a comment below. I'm glad to chat with you. Stay tuned for the next video.